Hey, everybody. I'm Jen Garrett. My passion for football and pushing boundaries has helped me to create a successful business using the same performance building principles of the world's best players. Through my Move the Ball book, workshops, and consulting work, I've used the same system to help thousands of people to think and execute like a pro athlete when it comes to business and branding. Now, I'm on a mission to help you utilize those tools and strategies to elevate your hustle and get you across the goal line. So get ready. It's time to suit up, to show up, and to move the ball. Hey, everyone. It's great to be back with you for another episode of Move the Ball. If this is your first time listening, welcome. And if you've been a part of the Move the Ball movement for quite some time, welcome back. I'm glad that you are here with us today. As you all know, this podcast is all about business, branding, sports, and of course, how to move the ball. This episode is part of my special Path to the Draft series, where I'm having conversations with NFL draft prospects on their path to the draft. Now, if you have not yet subscribed to the podcast, make sure that you do so, so that you never miss an episode as part of this special series, or just in general on both this series and the regular show. I've got some great guests coming up. All right. For today's episode, inside the huddle with us and ready to share his story and talk about his path to the draft is Jamal Pettigrew. Jamal is a football tight end who finished his college football career playing for the McNeese State Cowboys. Prior to McNeese, Jamal played at LSU and he was a member of the team that won the 2019 CFP National Championship. And we will talk about that and more in today's episode. Jamal, welcome to the show. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. Well, I know you're busy. I'm excited to chat with you. You were training down in New Orleans, and now you're in Dallas training, getting ready for Pro Day. So I appreciate you making time for us to connect and have this conversation. So let's run things back. You're from New Orleans, and you went to St. Aug, where there's a lot of football talent that's come out of that school, some of which who have been on the show before. And let's just talk about how did you get into football? Like, what was your path? And secondly, what was it about the sport that made you fall in love with the game? Yeah, I started playing football when I was about four years old. My mom took me to a playground in New Orleans and just told me it's time to start playing some sports and she signed me up for football. I've went on ever since, played all ages in New Orleans. And then ultimately I, I went to St. Olive and I started playing there and I played middle school ball first and then I started playing varsity football my ninth grade year. And what was it about football that excited you about the game? I just love football. I love the game. I've always watched it, LSU and the Saints when I was younger. So just grew up loving those teams. And ultimately, when I play the game out there, I love being out there with my teammates and scoring touchdown blocking. I just love being out there and playing the game of football. Yes, being on the football field, it's an incredible experience. I get energized every time I step on a field, so I can completely relate. So in my book, Move the Ball, which is really what sparked this whole Move the Ball movement, I wrote about several lessons and strategies that I learned from football and took away from the game as a kid, watching it and just being a student of the game since I was four. I want to get your take on what has football meant to you and what lessons have you taken away from the game that you think are important to be successful as you go into this next chapter and become a professional football player, as well as whatever you do outside of football? Football has meant everything to me. I've been playing it almost my entire life. I've learned so many lessons from it that has made me into the man that I am today, learning from multiple men, coaches. I've had great coaches in the past at Tenog, LSU, and McNeese State. Even when I was in Park Ball, I had great coaches. My dad was my head coach, Park Ball. So getting that time to spend with my dad, it, is, it means a lot to me, being around good friends and also get the good company. And some of the lessons I took from it is, is, you know, sometimes you might get knocked down in life and on the football field. You just got to go up and, and play the next play and just ultimately do better. So let's talk about your college football career. You started off at LSU, as I mentioned, won a natty with the Tigers, which we will for sure discuss in a minute. But before we go there, just talk about your football experience at LSU in general. I enjoyed my time at LSU. I spent four years there, ultimately graduated with a bachelor's in sports administration. I learned a lot of things on the football field from multiple coaches. We had two great head coaches, Coach Les Miles and Coach Ed Ogeron, a lot of office coordinators that came through. I learned a lot there, football strategy-wise and that's going to carry me into the next level. 
And your first career start was in a win over Syracuse. Talk to us about that first time you suited up and started in a game. I remember it like it was yesterday. The defense got a turnover on like the one-yard line. Ultimately, they called a two-part in set. Me and Foster went in, and Darius guys ran in for a touchdown. I, I remember it like it was yesterday, and it was ultimately a great time and a great experience. Now, in 2018, you ended up missing the season because of an injury. Talk to us about the injury and that recovery process, and also how was your mental state during that time? It was a long process. I had an ACL tear in my left knee. And something definitely that it taught me a lot of life lessons and ultimately made me even more mature today. My mental state was ultimately just get up every day and go at it the best I can. You know, some days were tougher than others, but ultimately at the end of the day, I knew that I had to get up out of bed every day and continue to recover if I ever wanted to play football again at the level that I was playing at. And as you know, being a better football player doesn't just happen on the field. There's a lot of work that goes on outside of that, in the weight room, in the film room. There are things you also pick up being on the sideline as well, right, when you're out with an injury. And so how did having to sit out the 2018 season help you to become a better football player? It taught me a lot about the game. Strategy-wise, I was able to sit back and actually observe a little bit and, you know, see other guys play. Learn from other guys. Like I said, Foster was a starter that year. I learned a lot from watching him play his last year, his senior year. He taught me a lot of things. And the game slowed down a lot for me that year. And I was able to actually earn things from not only players, but more from my coaches as I you know, had more time to be in the film room and get around them more. And let's talk about the 2019 season and winning the Natty. You played in all 15 games. That season it was a record-breaking 15-0 national championship season. Incredible experience. But before we talk about winning the Natty, talk to us about that year and what that year was like and why you think it was different than prior years. That year was special. And it all came together through the years of work under Coach Ed Ozeron. Coach Ed Ozeron made some great hires in Joe Brady and, and other coaches and analysts as well. And it ultimately just came together as one big group. And... People saw the work on the field and they saw the wins. They saw how we went 15 and 0, but they don't see the things that went on, you know, behind the curtains, whether it was us getting extra film room time, us getting extra work off the field, on the field, us just being together almost a lot of the times throughout the day, whether it was at class or just chilling around the facility. So it was, I think, really came together was great hires, and ultimately just the team becoming one, ultimately just going, setting the goal for ourselves and, and going to the national championship. Very talented guys on the team who are playing in the league today. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Grant Delpit, Christian Fulton, Justin Jefferson, the list goes on. When you look at that team, what is it about those guys that made them great? I mean, yeah, they had talent, but what made this team special? What made this team special is ultimately just playing together well, being a complement of each other. We had a great run game. We had a great passing game. We had a great whole line. I just think that ultimately, when you put all those things together, it's, it's hard not to win. And we had a great defense that made stops when it, when it was time to make stops and offense score points when it was time to score points. So when all those things come together and makes one, that's when you have a great team on that. And in your mind, what made Coach O a great head coach? He's a great, great leader. He led us that whole entire year. And we went for two, you know, he never got ahead of himself. He always stayed in the moment. He never said, we'll be on a Monday practice. He had never just jumped to conclusions on Saturday. All like, we're going to beat this team. No, we, we stayed focused. We stayed straight. And ultimately, we got one championship. And I think it's important to stay being focused in the moment and be where your feet are, as they say, and just focus on that specific day, being fully present there, showing up and handling what you need to do that day and not worrying about stuff that's going to go on the next day or the following day or thinking about what could happen after that. So let's talk about winning the Natty. What was that experience like for you? It was special for me. It was special for my family. I had a lot of family in attendance. You know, it was in New Orleans, a city that I'm from, a city that I love. And if I had to do it all over again, I, I would. I would do that any day of the week. It was just that special to me, winning the national championship in my city with my team. 
I can imagine is incredible to be home and winning that incredible game. I was rooting for LSU as an Alabama alum. Obviously, I got root for my conference. So it was in Clemson and Bama also have history as well. So it meant a little bit more as well to see LSU win. And even, in fact, you know, we're in season three of the podcast now on season one. Uh, it kicked off in 2020, shortly after the national championship. And Chris Leak, who also was a BCS national championship with the Florida Gators, was my first guest. And we talked about the LSU game at the beginning of the show. So really enjoyed watching the national championship. You guys did a great job and it was exciting to see on TV. Would have loved to have been there in person, but watching it on TV was exciting as well. So let's talk about you transferring to McNeese State in August of 2020. Talk to us about your decision to transfer. I know Coach Wilson had recruited you and so you were familiar with him already, but what was it like? Why did you decide to transfer and, and what excited you about joining the Cowboys team? What made me excited was reuniting with family. Coach Wilson, I wanted to reunite with him and he recruited me to LSU and ultimately I didn't get a chance to get coached by him because he left to be a head coach at UTSA. But getting a chance to be back with him, I, I think it was special. Coach Cody Ogeron being my quarterback, which is Coach O's son, that was a great opportunity. I've been knowing him since 2015. So being coach, my position coach was Coach Rishad Johnson. And I used to train with him like my sophomore year in high school. So I went where family was and I think it was a great decision. What was your most memorable moment playing in your final year of college football? My most memorable moment was playing against LSU in Tiger Stadium. I absolutely enjoyed it. <laughs> we didn't get the win, but it was fun being there playing in Tiger Stadium again for the last time. And so something else that's important to you is that you made the commissioner's list, academic honor roll. Talk to us about what were some of the habits that you put into practice so that you could excel in the classroom as well as on the field? Just balancing my time. At the end of the day, that's what being a student athlete is all about. Just balancing your time, putting enough time into your sport that you play and also putting your time into academics. And I figured that out and I made the <laughs> commissioner's list and it was a great achievement for me, something that, that I hold dear to my heart, just like I hold my bachelor's degree from LSU dear to my heart. Very, very well done. So congratulations on those accomplishments. Now you played in the Hula Bowl as well, which wasn't in Hawaii like it normally is. Aloha Stadium is closed for renovation. So you played at UCF in Orlando on January 15th of this year. So another nice warm climate. Tell us about that experience. Man, playing in the Hula Bowl was a great experience. I enjoyed every second of it. Took in the moment. I, you know, I was given the opportunity to showcase my talents and I took every opportunity there was to do that. Every play, every down, I was just trying to give my all and show uh, NFL scouts and CFL scouts, USFL scouts that, you know, I'm a good player and, and I want to help any team win. And what do you think makes you elite at your skill position? I think just the versatility of being able to block and catch passes. And with the tighter position, we're asked to do two things that are very critical to our offense. And being able to do both, I think you add a lot of value to yourself. And you've been training, working really hard. As I mentioned earlier in the show, you were in New Orleans first. You were with Coach Nat Nunnery in NXT training. Now you're in Dallas. What are some of the things that you've really been focused on improving upon? Ultimately, just improving my overall game, trying to get in and out of routes quicker, staying low when I block, and just overall be becoming a better athlete, a better football player. And there comes a time when football will come to an end at some point, hopefully not for quite some time for you. But have you thought about what it is you might want to do beyond football? Yeah, well, like I mentioned, I have a degree from LSU, sports administration, getting my master's in May from McNeese and a master's in criminal justice. So ultimately, I, I have two degrees to fall back on, but I want to own my own businesses. So Ultimately, hopefully when I'm playing, I'm going to set up some businesses so that I can have fall back on them after football is over. That's very good thinking to get that situated while you're still playing. Because I feel like more people nowadays are thinking about that. But when you look at football players 10, 20 years ago, it was just about playing football. And then there was a struggle to figure out what was next because they hadn't been thinking that forward about what would be the next chapter once they're done and they hang up those cleats. So something else that on the show we talk about branding, we talk about sports and business. 
you ended up getting a jewelry piece made that had your number, number 80, and it had the city of New Orleans in it. And that's part of your brand, right? So talk to us about why you wanted to do that. Why was that important? It was important to me because I've been wearing number 80 since I was four years old when I first walked out there to play football. And I wanted, ultimately, I wanted number eight. I was playing O-line at the time. So the coach was like, yeah, I don't, he can't wear number eight on the offensive line, but maybe he can wear number 80. And my mom was like, yeah, who uh, wore that number? And the coach said, Jerry Rice. And she was like, yeah, just give him that number. And I took that and ran with it. I've been wearing number 80 ever since. I wore that same all the other shoe and me. So the 80, I hold dear to my heart. In the city of New Orleans, I'm from New Orleans. You know, I never lived anywhere else. Ultimately, I just put two together and it was like, well, there it is. <laughs> well, it's great. It's a beautiful piece. So I'm glad that you ended up getting it. So something outside of football that I wanted to mention on the show is you are a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What got you into that? My dad took me to see the first Iron Man when it came out years, years, years ago. And every movie that came out after that, that Marvel produced, my dad brought me to see it. And then once I was old enough to start going on my own, I just kept going and kept going and kept going. And here I am today, a big, big, big fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think it's genius. I think it's unique. And... I hope it never ends. Well, we talk about branding, I mean, they have definitely done a fantastic job. Talented cast members that have contributed to that, but that is a business that is making billions of dollars and they've got it down packed. They know what they're doing and they're doing a great job at it. Really? <laughs> Seriously. So what I want to do now is run you through my two minute drill and just ask you some fun questions. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right. Outside of football, what do you like to do? I love being a photographer. I'm going to love taking pictures on my phone, playing video games, playing golf. been playing golf since I was about 12, 8 years old, something like that. So ultimately, those are the three things that I love doing. What is one thing most people don't know about you? Most people don't know that I play golf. <laughs> A lot of people do not know that. I don't really talk about it. I just, uh, people invite me to top golf and I just show up and swing a club and they don't like, how do you know how to swing it that good? And ultimately, I've been playing golf for a long time. All right. How about what three words would you use to describe yourself? Charismatic, charming, and reliable. I feel like those three words describe me the best. I'm a good person inside and out. I'm a reliable person. People can rely on me. And, you know, I'm a charming person. A lot of people like me. Great three words. If you had one intro song that you could play at all your public appearances, what would that song be? Probably God's Plan by Drake. I think it's a good song, great song, by the way. And ultimately, it's all about God's plan, what God has planned for you. Love it. What is one piece of advice or the best piece of advice that you've been given by a coach? By coaches, if you get knocked down, just get back up and keep playing. Play is always about the next play. You might do something wrong to play before, but if you come back and make up for it on the next play, just don't think about that last play. You're good. So that's that's great advice. Great. And I'm going to flip it now. What is the best piece of advice that you would give someone? The best piece of advice I would give someone is probably don't worry about the bad. Always focus on the good and, and try to turn the bad into good. Now, you're hosting a dinner party and you can invite three famous people, living or deceased. Who would you choose and why? I would choose Barack Obama, LeBron James, and Elon Musk. I would choose Barack Obama because who wouldn't <laughs> who would choose Barack Obama? I think he's a great person. I would love to hear his story and how he became the uh, president of the United States. I would choose LeBron James because ultimately he's a, he's a great businessman and he's also a great athlete. So I would want to learn from him and understand, you know, how are you as such a great businessman and, and still able to balance it with, you know, sports and, and his game that he plays. And Elon Musk, because he's a great businessman and I would love to learn how he turned himself into the man he is today. Absolutely. Three great choices. My last question is, do you sing in the shower? I do not sing in the shower, honestly. I listen to music in the shower, but I don't think I you ever hear me just singing, like outright singing. You know? I do rap in the shower, though. There you go. Okay. <laughs> and so as we look to close the show today, Jamal, where can people follow you? People can follow me on Instagram at JamalP80 and on Twitter at Jamal80P. Perfect. We will have those in the show notes so people can follow you on your journey. Thank you so much for being on the show today. It has been a true pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I'd love to be on the show again sometime. Oh, for sure. Once we see you playing in the league, we'd love to have you back on the show and wish you much success in this next chapter. 
Thanks again to everyone for listening. If you liked today's episode, make sure that you share it with somebody else. And lastly, I talk about this all the time. If you've been thinking about how you can be a better networker, because that is important to being able to move the ball and grow your brand, grow your business, sign up for the five-day virtual networking training camp. It is free. It's a five-day video series where I'm going to give you tips and tricks on how to be a better networker. So that's in the show notes. Go follow Jamal as well. His links are going to be in the show notes and we will talk to you next time. Until then, make sure that you suit up, you show up, and you move the ball. Thank you for listening to Move the Ball. To see more about what I'm up to and how I can help you to move the ball in your business, with your brand, or your career, check out my website at www.getinsidethehuddle.com. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast so that you never miss an episode, and also join the Move the Ball Facebook group for even more content and to be a part of the Move the Ball movement.